Hey guys and gals, I'm sitting here in my library right now. And if you're anything like me, you've read a few books throughout your life. And for me, it kind of really started in high school when they wanted us to read the classic literature like To Kill a Mockingbird and then stories by Ernest Hemingway. When I got into college, it was more like British literature with Shakespeare and sonnets and poetry. But once I graduated college, I really developed an interest for nonfiction, those things that they never really required us to read while we were in school. And I really don't know what influenced me the most, whether it was fiction or nonfiction, but I really like them both. Today we're going to go over some books that are relevant to the channel and to money, finance, success, and those things. As a matter of fact, once I discovered nonfiction, I started to read up on people that I was really interested in, either famous people or business tycoons. So I grabbed a collection of books that I think are very relevant to the topics of money. We're going to go through them today. And if you haven't seen my other video where I review other books, I concentrated a little more on business and talked about some really good influencers in the industry. So if you're interested in that video as well, I would say go check that out. So let's get started with this first book. The first book is called Million Dollar Habits by Brian Tracy. And if you know anything about Brian Tracy, I mean, he's got to be one of the most prolific writers when it comes to sales and careers and money habits. And he has a ton of books. And I, this one I keep coming back to from 2004. And he really covers a wide range of things, whether it's marketing, business, whether you're on your own or whether you work for someone else, and a lot of different money ha habits to develop as you mature in your career and in your life. One of the excerpts I want to read here is very interesting where he talks about he was at a job and his boss really wasn't taking him seriously. So he really wanted to do more. So his solution, and he emphasizes in the book, is to ask for more responsibility. And it took him a while to get that more responsibility, but once he did, he explains it like this. I developed the habit of doing the job quickly and well. I got it done fast. And then he goes on to say more about when he received even more responsibility. Whatever he gave me to do, I grabbed it like a fumble in a football game and ran for yards. I took the job immediately, went to work on it, completing it quickly and getting it back to him long before he ever expected it. This did not go unnoticed. And I love that line. I remember that one for a long time. This did not go unnoticed because people are going to notice you whether you want them to or not and whether it's negative or positive. So definitely if you're going to look into the Brian Tracy library, I would start with Million Dollar Habits. It's a great read. This next one is probably one of my most precious books in my library. And it's called Ben Franklin, America's Original Entrepreneur. Now the story behind this book is that Ben Franklin wrote his memoirs at about age 65 when he thought that his entire life was behind him when in fact it was really just getting started. Most of what we know about Ben Franklin happened after this book in terms of the Revolutionary War and his involvement. But this book, of course, is relevant to our discussion because it talks a lot about business and finance and keeping a really good reputation, especially in business. Ben Franklin is famously known for his Poor Richard's Almanac, and especially that one quote, a penny saved is a penny earned, amongst many other things as well. It's also really good to note that Ben Franklin was a millionaire back in the mid 1700s. So that should say a lot about his achievements. There's this one part in the book that really stuck with me for a long time. In fact, I had even copied it after I learned about it. He was working in his print shop 
and he made a big mistake. He dropped all these typesetting letters and each letter was, you know, typeset individually. So he had to clean it all up and he had to work all night. Well, it turns out he had the lights on and the shop was open all night. And he learned that people in the town were, they were starting to talk about him. And they were like, man, that guy works all night and he wakes up very early in the morning. He's got to be the hardest worker we know. So he really touched on that and then expanded upon that and how important it is to have a reputation. And here, here's a little excerpt from the book where he says, our late night industriousness was visible to everyone in the neighborhood and our reputation and our credit only improved as a result. And for some reason, I had a visual of that in my head and I copied that very experience in my own life because my office actually faces a main street. So there'll be times when I'll keep the lights on and I don't know if it really has any kind of effect like it may have in his day, but it's something that I kept in mind. I learned and I thought, you know what, if uh, someone knows that Joe Badger is working hard and has a really great work ethic, uh, all the more better, right? So this book is really, it was taken from his, Ben Franklin's original book, which was apparently kind of difficult to read. And this author organized it in a way that was much easier to read. Also, just a beautiful layout. And if you appreciate book design like I do, just a beautiful layout. And I don't know if you can see this, but these pages are those rough edged pages, which makes it look like a historical book, even though it's a modern book. And there's and there's maps in here and, and pictures and the, the font style is beautiful, like a, a throwback to Ben Franklin's time. So, like I said, a really precious book, my own library, and I'd highly recommend this to just anybody. The next book that I want to discuss is John Adams by David McCullough. This is a huge book. If you like reading, oh my God, I think this book took, took me forever. Over 700 pages. And what happened was David McCullough started researching Thomas Jefferson, a fascinating figure. And as a matter of fact, I was so interested in Thomas Jefferson that I took a little trip down to Monticello to check out his house there. He was a brilliant man, a writer, an architect, and of course, a president. And David McCullough must have been thinking similarly. Like, I really have to research and, and uh, uh, Thomas Jefferson and write a, a really good book about him. And he found out through all of his research at the Library of Congress that John Adams kept coming up even more so in that he was focusing on the wrong person. He really should be writing about John Adams. Now, there's this one chapter in here that's fascinating where he talks about the Revolutionary War. Now, growing up, I always thought, well, of course, everybody in the United States wanted to declare their independence from Great Britain. But according to John Adams, the details were more, more like this. 30% of the people were fine. They were set in their ways. Everything was good for them. Another 30% of the people really enjoyed the British crown and what they were gaining from the relationship with England. And while another third were just fed up with the taxes and the control and the lack of independence and so on, so it was really a concentrated third of the population that put all of that into progress. And that's just a little more history. He also talks about the great tulip craze where tulips in Dutch Holland became so valuable that they were being auctioned off. And of course, after the craze happened, eventually, the bubble burst and people lost a lot of their money because they were totally invested into tulips, into flowers. It's a lesson 
that kind of repeats itself throughout history. And if you really understand that, that happened so many years ago, it's a lot easier to understand the things that are happening today and how there are crazes and bubbles burst. People get will lose money or also that there's a mentality um, of greed and fear that exists today that was relevant even years ago. So definitely, I would recommend this book, especially if you're a big reader. It took me a long time. I'm in the habit of reading something over a long period of time and let, letting it soak in uh, eventually and really absorbing the book as I go along. You know, people on the internet really love Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. For some reason, they are really drawn to that book. And so many, many years ago, I read the book and I just didn't like it at all. And it's just my personal taste, by the way, because I know it's got a big following, but it came across as uh, shallow to me. In other words, just the title itself, Think, if you think you are rich, therefore you are. Uh, you know, if you just think about it, it will happen. Grow, think and grow rich. And I understand what he was going for, but it was just, it just wasn't for me. And I think a, a better alternative to that book, a very famous book and popular book, is The Magic of Thinking Big by David Joseph Schwartz, PhD. I wanted to get all three names in there. This is an old timey book, a lot like Napoleon Hill's. This was written in 1959. And when I picked up this book, I really enjoyed it a lot because it had a lot to say about personal wealth and personal achievement and uh, improving your habits. For example, here's some of his contents here. Believe you can succeed and you will. Cure yourself of excusitis, the failure or disease. Build confidence and destroy fear. Things like that, right? as you would expect a book like this, and it's very motivational. However, before he even gets into his chapters, and this is pretty much an easy read, I would say, not too long, but very powerful, very compact. And before he even gets into the chapters, he goes through these bullet points, what this book will do for you. And then he goes into 222 bullet points of the benefits of reading this book even before you get into it. So it's a fascinating read, and like I said, a, a great alternative. Or if you liked that book so much, if you liked um, Think and Grow Rich, compare it to this and, and see what you think. Okay, this book is a straight up finance, success, and business book. It is, it is called The Millionaire Woman Next Door by Thomas Stanley. Now, if you've seen my other video on book reviews, uh, one of my favorite books of all time is probably The Millionaire Next Door, 1997 by Thomas Stanley. And he was a professor at a university and he did the most comprehensive studies of and research of millionaires and basically what makes them tick and how we can glean from them, how we can learn from uh, the habits of the millionaire next door. And he says next door, it's because it's it's surprising. It's someone that we don't think is wealthy because they're not overly flashy, but instead they invest their time and efforts into other things that make them grow and become successful in ways that are not common in the popular media, for example. And in this book, the, ob the obvious slant is women and what he what the author does here dr stanley is he differentiates between men and women unveils some statistics about women for example who are very generous with their money millionaire women are more generous than anybody else and they give a huge percentage of their earnings yearly to charity for example and if he was a former professor so if you like data points and charts and statistics and breakdowns of the details of really what the profile is of the millionaire woman next door, then this is the book. It really goes into it 
to all those details while at the same time making it very relatable, very interesting, and for sure, if you are an entrepreneur, and I think, I think that really is the big tie-in here. Uh, there are a lot more women in their own businesses, in entrepreneurship, and even becoming more interested in investing these days than ever before. And I think this book is more relevant today than ever before and, and a definitely a definite must read. And I think for anybody, because there's a lot of good comparisons. Uh, when I say anybody, I mean men or women, because there's a lot of good comparisons between the two and what makes them different. So definitely Millionaire Next Door Woman by Thomas Stanley, PhD. If you stuck around long enough, I got a bonus book for you. And I like to throw in a book that at first bluff, it seems like it doesn't kind of fit in to money and success. But Arnold Schwarzenegger's book, The Education of a Bodybuilder, is exactly that. And I think what is most interesting about this book is that he wrote this very early on, and this is long before he became a film star, long before he became a big celebrity. And yeah, it talks about his bodybuilding career. It talks about fitness, if you're interested in that. But the story of Arnold is fascinating because he was always a very uh, frugal individual, very shrewd. He knew marketing very well. He was a big investor. And I'm talking about this all happened long before his movie career. And the story goes like this. There was a big earthquake in California. And so right away he developed this company and he put out an ad and he, he said, European bricklayers or European stonemasons, you know, we, we will rebuild your house in no time. Call us now. And he just employed all of the different bodybuilders that he knew from the gym. And sure enough, they went out and they rebuilt a lot of the homes that were destroyed during the earthquake. And he was a multimillionaire long before his film career. I have a little bit of history with this book in that, um, so this is 1977 when this comes out. Really, Arnold's career didn't really kick off until like the 80s, let's say, or the late 80s. I grew up across the street from a mall and there was a big department store. And we heard that this one guy, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Schwarzenegger was going to come. And I grew up in Ohio, in the USA, and he was coming to the mall to promote his book. So we, we go up there and I'm a young kid and we're watching him sign books and talk to people. And there's hardly anybody in line. He's uh, beating the pavement. He's out there pushing his book and doing what he needs to do to, to uh, build his career. But he's also known as a big investor in property. And it's really fascinating because like I said, it's a book where you're, you don't think it's really going to have that kind of impression upon you when it comes to uh, money, finance, career, personal motivation, but it really does. And it's definitely a good read. I'd recommend this any day of the week. I really hope that you liked these book recommendations. I really enjoyed reading them and I think you will too. And I want you to do three things for me. First of all, like, two, subscribe, definitely subscribe to the channel. We got a lot more coming, you don't wanna miss out. And three, leave a comment below because you can tell me about the books you enjoyed or books that maybe I could review in the future. That's all I got, Badgers. Now get back to work because money never sleeps. I'll see you later.